Now, management thinking is nothing new, right? Aristotle had the management theory. He had uh, influencing theory. Okay. He had influencing theory. Uh, Confucius had his own theory. <laughs> A lot of, uh, let me just see. Yeah, yeah more than 2000, 3000 years ago, Aristotle came up with his own theory on influencing people. Uh, Sun Tzu written, wrote the book, Art of War. Machiavel, again, has his own theory. Uh, each one has the, their positives and their negatives. Right? Uh, people are still learning from those theories. Right? People are still learning from those theories and applying those theories even today. For example, Aristotle had... Uh, uh, influencing. He wrote a book 2,500 years ago on how to influence people, how to get people uh, to do the job for you. Management is the art of getting things done through people. And Aristotle wrote a book 2,500 years ago on how to influence people to do the job for you. And ethos, right? Uh, pathos, yeah, pathological pathos and Logos. He came up with three ways to influence people. Ethos appearing to be ethical, legit, legitimate. Right? When you give your name card to someone, you appear legitimate. You are the decision maker. When the doctor wears the white coat, carries the stethoscope, appears legitimate, legitimate, legit. So Aristotle said, you have to portray to the other party ethos that you are legitimate. Pethos, you should portray to the other party, you should understand the need, their aspiration, empathize, emotion. You should show concern, emotion. Logos, you have to be knowledgeable, expert, so that you can be logical in your influencing. So if you look at the management, of today, you're trying to do the same thing. You want to be ethical. You want to be empathetic, uh, empathizing with the other, other party, employee or anybody, customer, supplier. And you also want to be knowledgeable, logical. And later he added one more, Kairos. Wait for the opportune time, the right time. All right. Similarly, Confucius. Those who have read Confucius, they would know his art of management. Machiavel was uh, negative. How to? That's why the noun is also Machiavellian. Modern Western management is focused on exactly the same thing, but looking at the processes, looking at the processes, looking at the technologies. Whereas Aristotle, Confucius, uh, Machiavel, Sun Tzu are looking at the people part. Right? People part, different. Uh, ethos, pathos, logos was a different thing. People based, ethical, emotional, knowledge. Whereas today's management is more on process improvement, use of tools and uh, technology to help you achieve. But they are basically talking the same thing. And then you have digital thinking. Today you have digital technologies. So I need to also add in a new component of using digital technology. How do I work alongside technology? How do I work alongside robots, for example? Remember, in the future, today you take a taxi, there is a taxi driver. Three years later, you will take a taxi, there is no driver. The taxi is going on its own. So how do you now get comfortable with that situation? Because there is now an advent of technology. 
Okay. So over the last 2,500 years, things have changed because there have been new developments along the way. So there's a constant rethinking, but it doesn't mean that I give up the things of the past. Ethos, pathos, logos is today as relevant as it was 2,500, 3,000 years ago. Confucius theory is as relevant today as it was maybe 1,000 years ago. Sun Tzu's uh, theory is as important today as it was maybe 600, 700 years ago. And similarly, Machiavelli's theory. Perfect. Today's context, we look at the combination. Of course, Aristotle didn't have the uh, technology yet, <laughs> so-called at his disposal. But today we have technology at the disposal. So we have to combine the two. From a management perspective, it is not people or technology, but people technology together, which is socio-technological system. Today we work in an organization that is seen as a socio-technological system. Two parts, you have technological system, task, methods, tools, technology, and the social system, people, behavior, interaction. So people interacting among themselves, people interacting with the system. All right. Less efficient technical system. All right. Sometimes lead to better performance due to very close working of the group. As compared to very high technology, very efficient technology, without the same social, positive social dynamics. So even though you have the technology, but if people do not work in a positive influence, that technology is of no use. Sometimes a low, less efficient technical systems combined with very efficient social interactions is better than more efficient technological systems paired with less efficient uh, individual influences. Right. So working methods and performances are one part. You also have technology on the other part. So these two have to work together. And moving forward, this interaction will keep increasing. Right. This interaction, look at this. We used to have face-to-face -face classroom session. Now we don't. It is through technology. Zoom has become a household name. It's become a noun. Let's Zoom. I'm sending you a Zoom invite. Now it can be anything, but any virtual invite is called Zoom invite. Like Xerox became a noun for photocopy. And moving forward, we'll continue to see more of that. So new technologies have made definitely made changes to the way things are working today. But the advantages of any technological improvement will be offset by weak psychological contracts. So you have to, as a manager, you have to make that interaction aligned. If not, whatever technology you put in uh, will not work. They cannot be independent of each other. Organization must balance the economic, te economic technological aspect with the psychosocial needs of the people. That is the challenge. Because the people behavior is becoming very volatile. So the behavior of the people is influenced also by the environment. Environment is ambiguous, volatile. People are stressed. Mental illness is increasing. Then you have technology, which is getting more and more complex. So the challenge is how do organization achieve its objective using both the human factor as well as the uh, technical factors co-working within the organization. So organizational balance method becomes very important. You need to create the right balance between the human and the system right, to achieve the organizational objective. So these are the, these are various uh, factors 
for example, organizational purpose. That is the center for any organization. Every any organization that is set up has a purpose. For profit, not for profit. Right? Charity sector, public sector, private sector. They have certain purpose. Right? You cannot have an organization without any purpose. Then there is a, a kind of thinking. The leader in me. People start to look at their skills, which are unique to them, right. their skills and their ability to deal with other people. Right. The talent within, am I investing in talent as a resource? I may have my skills, but I also need talent because I need to be able to do things which are changing over a period of time, right? So investing in talent as a resource, making the organization harmonious. How do people work in an organization in a, in a coordinated, coordinated, collaborative way, rather than working in independent silos uh, cut off from each other. So cohabitation, right? habitat. Organizational husbandry. Right? In, it basically refers to solution and decision which are made with awareness of consequences. Right? Whatever decision you're taking is taking after fully understanding the consequences of those decisions. Right. Being creative. Organization uh, has to be creative, has to be innovative, evolving. It has to develop sustainable practices. Right? It has to develop sustainable practices and hold organizational actors accountable for outcome. Those who are working in the organization have to be accountable for the outcome, especially keeping in view uh, the environmental and ethical issues as we go along. And organizational cycling, a continuous process of change within an organization. Organization cannot remain static. It has to constantly change. Mm -hmm. So that's a model within an organization in which you are trying to match the organization people with the system in order to achieve the purpose of the organization more effectively. Now, again, remember there are as many definitions of organization behavior as there are management gurus. So you don't have to uh, kind of memorize all of them, right? but you need to know the different aspects of uh, organizational behavior. Now, the, the newer management scholars look at organization as the systems. Remember, previously the organization was looked at as a group of people. Then it was looked at as a group of people working on certain processes uh, within certain organization structure. Today we look at organization that is people, process, systems, technology. And then there are different parts to the organization that needs to be interrelated. So you need to interrelate your policies, procedures, uh, processes with the people, with the systems. It cannot be independent of each other. Okay. Now you cannot understand the whole system of what will make the organization increase in return on investment cannot be considered by looking at only technology. Oh, if I implement new technology, my ROI will increase, will not happen. You cannot look at achieving your objective of increasing ROI by focusing on getting the right people. May not happen. Or having the right processes. The process, skill, and people, process, skill, and people, sorry, process skills and systems must work together. 
you may have the best of systems but no processes no skills you cannot achieve the objective you have the technology you have the systems you have the processes in place but no competent people it will not work you have the skills you have the system but no processes no policies it will not work these three things have to come together so you have to look at the different parts and recognize how they are interdependent on each other and successful managers are the one who are able to integrate these three things if you start looking at each one of them separately you will not achieve the organizational objective you are investing in skills you are investing in technology you may be investing in processes but still the roi is not there why because they are not looked at it as an interrelated part so systems view of management systems view of management is what we are focused on today and moving forward industry 4.0 we are adding one more kind of uh, dimension to it which is robotics or machines machines so we have autonomous vehicles right last mile delivery using autonomous vehicles we have transportation vehicles that are autonomous vehicles we have maybe trains that will be autonomous planes that will be autonomous so you are adding one more dimension of robotics working with machines right moving forward so how are you able to combine these three things as as environment becomes more and more complex why it is getting complex because you are getting added dimension aristotle had no such problem he was only focusing on people all right he was only focusing on people but today we have multiple dimensions so the systems approach to organizational behavior looks at studying the uh, interrelation of seemingly independent parts of the organization so how do i put them together so what are the activities that can be done one one starting point is to break the silos as long as you work in the silos the interrelation will not be there so what is happening in organization is that managers have started to use cross functional groups or cross functional teams for many of their activities all right so you are bringing in people from different perspective rather than looking at procurement from procurement perspective now i start to look at procurement from production perspective procurement from marketing perspective procurement from finance perspective or organizational perspective you are looking at accountabilities you need to look at how to under you need to understand the employees the information technologies and the processes and how they can be interrelated what will bring them together encouraging collaboration between organization so how do i collaborate with my customer how do i collaborate with my supplier how do we share information how do i share information with the supplier how does the supplier share information with me how do i share information with the customer and how does the customer share information with me the more the sharing the more collaborative i the the organizations become so i need to be collaborative internally i need to encourage collaboration between different organizations all right so i may have suppliers customers distribution channel partners financial partners media and so on so i have to not just work internally focus internally i need to work across organizations so my i should encourage my employees to look at suppliers as partners rather than look at suppliers as a means to get profit 
I should be looking at supplier from a collaborative approach rather than adversarial approach. The concept of supply chain. So instead of working in silos like this, this is organization, this is customer, this is supplier. I need to work. This is organization. This is customer. This is supplier. I need to convert this to this. One of the ways to integrate is technology. The skill of the people to be collaborative. All the while the people have been trained to work in this way. Now we need to change to work in this way. Different. The third dimension or another dimension to management is contingency approach, all right? Contingency approach is based on situation. It says that there is no one type of management. You cannot look at management as a process. You cannot look at management as developing people or, or getting people to do the work that you, are, you need them to do or you look at systems and technology or interrelated or oh, collaborative, you should be collaborative. You should be working together. No, the, the management gurus who propagate the contingency approach say that management should be situational. Management should be situational. If certain situation exists, I should use this management approach. If certain situation exists, I should use this management approach, which is basically saying, should I have collaborative relationship with all my suppliers? Obviously the answer is no. Should I have collaborative relationship with all my customers? The answer is no. If this supplier has a bigger impact on me, my business, my contract value is significant, then I have collaborative relationship. If this customer is a high net worth customer, is giving me a lot of business, then my relation, my managed relationship approach would be collaborative. If this customer does not contribute much to my organization, my relationship may not be collaborative. My, my management marketing method, my marketing approach, my business development approach will not be similar. So that is the contingency approach. Right. So you have people, processes, systems, now contingency or situational. And Buchanan, uh, Hershey and Blanchard, these were the uh, management scholars that, pro that were proponents of this theory, contingency theory, which sounds quite uh, practical, right? Because how can I treat one size fit all? Different situation will need different management approach. It sounds very intuitive also. So I need to balance the best fit based on the situation. Sometimes collaborative will work, sometimes collaborative will not work. Should I have cross-functional team working in the organization for everything? Obviously, no. So I have to look at proportionality. How much time and effort should I spend should be proportional to the return that I'm going to get? If individual working is good enough, then work individually. If cross-functional team will achieve your objective, then work cross-functionally. Right. Don't use cross-functional team as a solution to all your problems, no? So whatever effort you're putting in management has to be proportional to the return that you're going to get from that uh, approach. So there is no one size fit all. Contingency approach, uh, 
basically focuses on management deciding a choice depending on the situation. All right. You leave the option to the management or the managers to let them decide which option will be better. All right. Sometime cooperation. All right. It will also depend upon how easy or difficult the task is. Simple task, simple decision making, individuals can take. Complex task, complex decision making, complex variable, group are better suited. All right. Positional power, what is the manager's authority in getting individuals to do the work? If remember, managers can use their authority to get individuals to work in an efficient manner. If they do not have a higher authority, then they'll have to work with their peers to get things done. So it will depend upon various uh, situations. Another model by Galbraith, which is the STAR model, it uses both the social and the behavioral sciences as an organization design framework. So the organization design framework or how should the organization be structured or work depends on how to integrate the social and the behavioral aspect. And if you look at the STAR, this is the STAR model. Right? Strategy, people, structure, processes, and the rewards. The strategy is in terms of product and market. Remember, any, any strategy, when we talk about corporate strategy, is about identifying the product range and the market in which you want to operate. Not any strategy is basically that. In the long term, three years, five years, what is the product range that you're going to offer? And what are the markets in which you would want to operate? For that product and market that you have identified, what type of people you need? What type of people you need? And what type of organization structure will work well? Centralized, decentralized, Hybrid, what will be the processes that you will put in place to meet your outcome of that objective of that strategy? How will you share? How will you motivate people? What will be the rewards that you will put in place to achieve, to, to get people to achieve? align with the objectives of the organization. And these are interrelated. When you define the product range, when you try to identify the product range, when you are looking at what product you want to develop, will depend upon what kind of competencies you have within the organization. What kind of structure you have within the organization. Because based on your organization's capability, competencies, the structure, the resources, you'll have to come out with a product strategy. You'll have to come out with a marketing st market strategy. Resources are not infinite. You cannot suddenly say that tomorrow I'll fly the uh, rocket to the moon and go into commercial space travel. It will not work. I may not have the people with the talent, with the competency, I may not even have the money. My organization structure is not designed for that. I do not have the processes in place. So each one of these are interrelated. All right. Each of these are interrelated. So there is an interrelationship between the social, the behavioral and the technological aspects in any organization. And the behavior of the people also changes depending upon the strategy in place, the structure in place, the rewards that you're giving, 
and the processes that you have in place, that you have incorporated. Related. Now, remember, we started off with the business environment being very dynamic, very volatile, right? very complex, right? very complex. Now to operate in a fast moving environment, OR, which is organization operating reality, reinforces the fact that organization need to be adaptable. They should be agile. They should be adaptable to the changes that is happening in the market. If your current systems, processes, and skills do not help you achieve your outcome, then you will have to quickly change. And that is uh, by Foster, a very recent theory, uh, who, who comes up with this organization's operating reality. Right? And the elements in that is first connection, the relationship that people seek within an organization. Remember, people are looking at interaction within the organization. People like to meet people, interact with people. They want to meet that with their colleagues, suppliers, customers. People seek such interaction. Interdependence. Organizations are dependent on each other. Previously, people are working, organizations were working in their independent silos. But today there is a recognition of the reality that organization will have to work together. So the boundaries between organization and boundaries within the organizations have started to blur. Okay. There is a dependence. Employees, today employees are dependent on employer, employers are dependent on employees. So that has led to kind of providing an environment in which employees are free to experiment, innovate, reimagine how things will be done. There is no directive kind of uh, behavior from the manager. There's no directive behavior. Remember, work from home. Previously, managers would say, my goodness, how to make people work from home? They will all be inefficient. They'll all become lazy. How will I control them? How will I watch over them? How will I get them to do work? But the reality is, work from home is more efficient. Of course, contingency. Not all work can be done from home. That is also a reality. Certain work, has to be done in interaction with group. That's a reality. People need connection also. Ideas come when people connect with each other, sometimes in a physical space. But certain things can also be done virtually. Interconnection. Interconnection between personal, professional, and social networks. Today, we, most of the communication is through social media. Previously, it was not there. That's a reality that organization has to face and the managers have to face. The managers may be trolled on the social media. They may be, employees may be talking all kinds of things about their organization and the manager on Glassdoor. So there is an interconnection, not just within people and organization, but also in the social network. You put up a Facebook, you will see you can, you can do sentiment analysis. People happy with you, angry with you, upset with you, sad with you as an organization. So these are the reality under which organizations are operating. And managers have to understand this reality. If they continue to behave and manage in the way they have been managing five years ago, 10 years ago, then they are bound to fail. The understanding of the operating reality is a, is a critical uh, competency for managers. 
so connection interdependence uh, dependence and inter interconnection so these are the four factors of the organizations operating reality and these are constantly changing contingency approach is is probably the in my view a better option right depending upon a situation manager should be flexible enough to change their process of management they cannot have a one size fit all whether this reality or that reality i use the same management uh, approach i'm bound to fail and now there is what is called post modernism right the new organization the organization post covid will be different from an organization pre covid so post 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 modernization we are talking about 2022 23 organizations will be very different from organization 2019 that is for sure more fluid fluidity structural fluidity cultural fluidity no office we work work central no singapore malaysia india europe germany whatever cultural fluidity you can work with anyone anywhere in the world gig economy that i can i can, if i need to get some job done i can get the job done anywhere i can go to fiverr and look for some people or some organization that can do the job that organization may be based in singapore that organization may be based anywhere in the world so there is a cultural fluidity multi directional information flow no up down up down subordinate supervisor supervisor subordinate today with social media <laughs> it can be unidimensional multidimensional all di all di the sense of dimension has been lost all right downsizing delaying is hastening all right post covid even more so employments are not going to come back again that is for sure certain employments will disappear certain jobs will disappear never to come back again new jobs will appear which are not there two years ago right. so there has to be multiple multi skilling so as an employee i should be good at technology managing technology managing uh, maintaining technology maintaining network plus good at the job that i am because i do not have a network engineer to call a hey, my network not working so there's no network engineer call your internet service provider solve your problem yourself all right so i have to become multi uh, multi skilled all right able to work in team and able to work independently as well motivated all right motivated and encouragement of entrepreneurship cultural tolerance because of ambiguity change and flexibility right so i should be tolerant i should be tolerant to changes i should accept that things will be ambiguous things will be uncertain so i have to be constantly ready for change and flexible and be flexible in my approach organic organization basically talks about organization that is uh, uh, evolving constantly evolving right the structural and cultural fluidity of an organization makes the organization evolving so the uh, i need to make sure that my organization is is live organization so there is a culture of information sharing skill sharing the sharing economy 
rather than keeping things to myself and uh, doing my task on my own. So job have to be redesigned uh, to make a job rotation easy, cross-functional team working easy, uh, rather than each one doing the job for which they have been selected or recruited. Focus on the output rather than on the process. Because the processes will make the organization rigid. Focus on the outcome will make the organization more fluid, more organic. So postmodern, there is a, remember, there are people who are uh, so-called against the developments of technology. Okay. So there are pros and the cons of postmodern theory also. All right. So what is this reality? Whose reality it is that we are thinking, we are talking about? Everyone's reality is different. Everyone look at the environment and looks at it different. So the reality has to be objective, neutral reality. All right. There is no such thing as truth. Truth is also different. Facebook thinks that this is not fake news. People think that it is fake news. Facebook thinks that's news. All right. So alternative reality. That's a new word. Never heard of before. We thought reality is reality. Sun rises in the east. Reality. Now we are talking about alternative reality. All right. Alternative reality. Scientific and technological uh, knowledge leads to destruction or oppression. Maybe, maybe not. All right. So is, is Jeff Bezos dominating our way of life? Probably yes. Is Facebook dominating the way we do things? Probably yes. Is Google dominating the way we buy things? Probably yes, because the, the ads are leading you to certain things. So scientific and technological knowledge may lead to destruction or oppression. The US election, people thought that social media created that feeling that I should vote for a particular party against other party. So it may lead to destruction, it may lead to oppression. Okay. Reason and logic are simply abstract concepts. Okay. Human nature is socially determined. That is, that is again a reality. Language is not static. So meaning can change over a period of time. <laughs> what is news? What is fake news? Fake news is true news. We have coined a word, WhatsApp University. We get a lot of knowledge through WhatsApp. Half the thing is fake. But first thing in the morning, you read WhatsApp. Instead of reading newspaper, we read news space, WhatsApp. All right. And we rely on the news that is coming through the face, Facebook or, or Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever uh, media that Facebook has, right? Instagram or whatever. Theories that are used to explain the world force conformity and disregard other perspective. So dominant forces of the world propagate a theory and expect everybody to follow conformity. But then there are other perspectives. So postmodernism, even though it has created a lot of collaboration, it is also given a platform for a lot of dissent, uh, dissension. All right, because your reality may not be my reality. So the whole perception is different. Postmodernism, physical organization will not may not exist. Will be in a virtual organization. No rules. No mass. The system model theories that have been developed so far are nothing more than ideas. So focus will be on ideas. 
systems and technologies will not give ideas ideas will create systems and technologies so post modern organizations will look different and like i said 2022 23 the organizations will look very different 